Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be testing out the brand new Hourglass Vanish Liquid Foundation. I am super pumped. I have been eyeing this for the last several weeks, pretty much since it sneak peeked on the Sephora website and Trend Mood started talking about it. All of the claims seemed right up my alley. It's supposed to be full coverage, long wearing, like a natural matte finish. So I was very, very curious. I wanted to see how it would hold up on this oily, skin of mine so I picked up a sample we're going to be applying it I'm gonna give you my first impressions and then I'm gonna be doing an all-day wear test to let you know how it holds up if you are new here to my channel my name is Lauren thank you so much for hanging out with me today and chatting about some beauty goodness I hope you will consider subscribing and coming back to check out more of my content I've been doing some fun stuff here lately uh, but yeah without making this intro too long we've got a lot to chat about so let me scoot you guys a little bit closer and tell you more about this foundation all right guys so let's get down to business now just so that you're aware I actually just picked up a sample from Sephora I didn't actually go out and buy the product and here's the reason why I would much rather try a product out get a sample and see if I like it before I decide I'm gonna actually spend the money on the product because if I buy it and I don't like it one of two things is gonna happen either I'm gonna waste my money or I'm gonna go and return that product and they're going to have to throw it away because it's been used. So I really don't like being wasteful, so I figured this is the same product one way or the other, whether it's in the packaging or not. So I will insert on the screen for you guys a picture of what the foundation looks like so you can see the packaging while I'm talking about it. So we are gonna be testing out the Hourglass Vanish Seamless Finish Liquid Foundation. You get 0.84 ounces of product or 25 milliliters for $50. $56. That is crazy expensive. Even my Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Foundation, I don't believe is quite that much and you get a full ounce of product. So a little bit deceiving there. Just be aware guys, you're not getting a full ounce, which is the industry standard. So from what I can see online, there are 32 shades available. The shade range does seem decent. It does seem like there's a pretty good balance of light, medium, and deep shades. I actually was sort of like right in the middle of the very first first row of colors so there weren't a whole ton uh, lighter than the shade that I picked which was buff so I wonder if you're very very fair uh, whether or not you'll be able to find a shade um, I'm not 100% sure again I think it's always best to go to the store and actually swatch the real product if you have the ability to do so and on the deeper end of the spectrum it looks like the shade range isn't bad there are quite a few very deep shades but again I can't actually speak to the undertones or how great they are. So I would definitely recommend watching uh, a person of color if you want to know how well this shade range works on deeper skin tones. So as for the claims of this product, it says it is a highly concentrated liquid foundation designed to deliver instant full coverage with just a half a pump. We will try that out and see. And it says no primer needed, uh, but I typically do wear a primer and I was going to use my Kula Daydream Mineral Primer today because this will give me some SPF. This is very similar to Hourglass's primer so I thought it might be a good one to use. So it says it's supposed to have a natural finish, full coverage, it's for normal combination and oily skin types. It doesn't say dry which is interesting. I wonder if it would cling to dry patches or not and uh, it's supposed to have light reflecting microspheres that blur and create a soft focus finish. It is also supposed to be waterproof, transfer proof, and sweat wet proof. So all of these things are what had me intrigued. I have not tried the original Vanish stick foundation. I've like swatched it in stores, but I've never actually purchased it because I felt like it would be too creamy and too heavy on my oily skin. It seemed to be geared more towards people with drier skin types. So this guy seems to be more oily skin friendly. We will put that to the test though, because if you've watched any of my foundation reviews before, you know that I have a tendency to always get shiny no matter what. It's just a matter of how quickly and how bad it gets. So looking at the how to use, so we can make sure we're doing this the way that the brand intends, it says step one is to hydrate, which I've done. I am wearing moisturizer. It says it does not require primer. But again, I do want to put on some sunscreen. I tried to wear sunscreen on a daily basis. This guy has SPF 30. So uh, if this goes poorly today, what I will do is try this again uh, without primer. But considering that I consider like primer or sunscreen a step I like to do in my makeup routine, I don't know if it's necessarily 
a bonus to me if primer is a deal breaker. Now, it does have a bunch of different instructions on the Sephora website for how to apply this depending on what kind of finish you get. And I get the feeling that if you go overboard with this foundation, if you apply too much, it is going to appear cakey on the skin. So if you want it to look more natural, a little is going to go a long way. You need to kind of build it up and apply less than you think that you need. So it says for full coverage to use a brush with densely packed bristles to lay down more product for an instant full coverage, use short circular motions to blend. They recommend their brush, which is $46. I have this brush from Tarte on hand and I feel like it's very similar in style and shape. So this is what I'm gonna use. And then they say to use a less dense brush for a more diffused coverage or to get a more luminous finish to use a damp makeup up sponge which I have the Sigma one right here so we're gonna see I will use the brush on one side and the sponge on the other if I actually notice any difference in the way that it looks all right so I just zoomed you guys in a little bit so you can see better what I am doing I have this little spatula from a Sigma here because I think this will be helpful in getting the product out of my little sample jar so now it says to do this in sections I think it dries fairly quickly so I'm just going to start to dot this on the lower portion of my face and uh, let's see how it goes. So immediately right off the bat, the first thing that I'm seeing is that it looks dry on my skin. Like it does look even in tone, but I am seeing a dryness and texture accentuated, which is interesting because I am oily and normally dryness is not something you tend to see on my skin. I feel like the coverage is nice though and the feel is pretty nice, like it doesn't feel too heavy. Let me just dot on, ooh, that dried down real fast. Okay, let me dot on just like a little bit more. It seems to be spreading fairly well with the brush, but yeah, again, I feel like it just, it looks dry on my skin. So aside from the dryness, I actually feel like the evenness of this and the coverage of this is really beautiful. It doesn't look uh, too heavy or cakey. It does look very naturally matte on the skin. It doesn't feel completely dry, but it doesn't feel thick or creamy or any kind of weird texture or anything like that. So I'm curious to see whether or not on the other side, the sponge makes it look any less dry. Okay, I maybe used too much and I'm totally not following instructions. Blend quickly. This does dry down extremely fast. I see why they say you should work in sections and not go too crazy. All right, so here is the sponge side and I do feel that it looks less dry and I would not call this finish luminous at all. Like it definitely still looks matte, maybe more like of a satin matte. It does not look dewy at all, uh, but it looks less flaky and dry than it does on the brush side. So I like the way the brush applied it. I felt like it blended out faster and easier than the sponge. I had to really kind of like work the product in on this side and with it drying so fast, it made me a little worried it was going to be streaky, but once I took the time to really blend it in, I feel like it does look a little bit more skin-like on this side. So with my initial thoughts just on first application, I don't hate this, but I don't love it. I feel like I like the way the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion looks on my skin better. It doesn't accentuate texture and dryness in the same way, but we'll see how this wears if it stays matte for a long time. It's supposed to be transfer proof and waterproof and sweat resistant and all that kind of good stuff. So hopefully that will mean that this will really lock in and not kind of like turn into a greasy mess in three, four hours. Uh, but we will see. So as far as the rest of my complexion, I figured I'll use my Tarte Shape Tape because this is a tried and true, so I'm gonna conceal my under eyes and then set with the Cover FX Perfect Setting Powder. This is basically my little dream team or like my tried and true for every foundation wear test that's high end. I pretty much always use these guys to keep things consistent. So what I'm gonna do is finish up the rest of my makeup, I'll come back and then I'll share my thoughts on how my blush and bronzer and all that good stuff applied on top of this guy. 
and I'm back. It is a little bit later. I had an 11 o'clock meeting, so I had to go take care of that in the middle of doing my makeup and then come back and finish my makeup. So currently it is 12.18 in the afternoon and I sat down to film this video at 10.30 in the morning. So this foundation has been on my face for less than two hours, like about an hour and a half now. So it's had a chance to settle in a little bit and I've obviously applied the rest of my makeup on top. So let me give you some updated thoughts. So as far as my other makeup and how everything worked, I feel like the Shape Tape blended in okay to this foundation, but because it did dry down and it was a little dry on the skin, I feel like it didn't blend in quite as seamlessly as it does with other foundations. But then once I set it, I mean, I feel like my blush bronzer and highlight went on fine. I didn't notice any weird like skipping or patching or flaking off in that respect, so I feel like those look fine. I'm wearing my Jouer Blush Bouquet, Butter Bronzer, and my Wet n Wild Highlight. So again, staple things I've used a bunch of times before. So I'm gonna get myself a little closer, hoping that you'll be able to see maybe more of the texture of this foundation up close. But uh, looking in my little mirror here, uh, I feel like I am looking extremely dry right in this area. Like my makeup is looking very flaky. Also, I feel like it blended weird on my forehead. It, it's kind of like patching in certain spots, which I don't normally notice with my foundations. It's also looking like it's breaking apart kind of down here on my chin. And again, I've only had this on for like an hour, so it hasn't been a particularly long time. I think the sponge side looks much better. It looks more seamless. Still a little drier than I would prefer, but, but not bad. The coverage also, I wouldn't say is crazy full. Like it's medium to full. Like I'm still seeing some of my like blemishes through the foundation, but it's not sheer by any means. So uh, the shade match buff I think is really nice. I think that the coverage is decent. I like it, but the finish is just very, very dry and flaky, which is so odd because being oily, that's like the last thing I would expect to see on my face. And then of course, with all the claims of it being transfer proof or transfer resistant and waterproof and sweat proof and long wearing, like I kind of feel like it's already starting to break apart a little bit, which is not a good sign. So I'm going to continue to wear this foundation for the rest of the day. We'll see how it goes and uh, I'll check back in with you guys later. And I'm back. So uh, today's been super crazy busy. It's about 5.30 now. I've been doing a ton of work uh, and I'm about to sit down and film another video. But before I do, I want to give you an update on this foundation. So the dewiness has definitely arrived. Now this has been on my face for, I guess, technically like about seven hours now. My full face has been on for about six and uh, I'm starting to see that little bit of luminosity kind of all around the center of my face. I feel like even though it is looking less dry than it was before, it's still not looking mm, fantastic. Like I feel like on this side of my face, it still looks a little bit slightly broken apart. Definitely is looking more like skin, but I still think that the sponge side, while looking more shiny, kind of looks a little bit more even in coverage. But I have other videos to film. I think what I'm going to do, because I just do want this to look like at least somewhat decent for my next video, is just touch up right here around my nose where I've rubbed off some of the foundation, but I'm gonna leave the rest of it the way that it is. On that note, I'm gonna let you guys go, but I will check back in in a little bit. Hey guys, so uh, it is after midnight currently I totally like passed out on the couch woke up and was like mm, I need to get ready for bed I need to take this makeup off and uh, I have not done a final check-in so I wanted to pop on here and let you guys see what the foundation is looking like right now so here's a little bit closer you can see it's kind of rubbed off around my nose and chin so my thoughts are I think I might take two try this again tomorrow without a primer and see 
if it goes the same or if it goes any better. All right, I am ready for round two of testing out this foundation. We're gonna do a few things a little bit differently this time. Hopefully application will go a little bit more smoothly and will look a little less dry as a result. So I'm using a different moisturizer today. I'm using my Wander Beauty Dive In Moisturizer. I'm like obsessed with this guy. I think it's fantastic. So my skin is nice and well hydrated. I also exfoliated yesterday. So hopefully that got rid of some of my dry patches. Patches. And we're also going to skip primer today. Hourglass said you don't need a primer, don't use a primer, so this time around I'll, I'll listen to them. So I did like the way that this product applied with a brush better than a sponge, so I'm going to use a brush to apply the foundation all over my face today. So I'm just going to dot a little bit of this on like I did before, and we'll just start blending away. So, so far I feel like it definitely did even out my skin tone and it is looking a little bit less dry uh, and flaky than it was yesterday, probably because again, I scrubbed off the, the flaky bits of my face. This winter, man, this weather has been just wrecking havoc on my skin. All right, so this is what we're looking like with pretty much one layer of the foundation on. I am liking it better than the first time that I applied this. I'm not seeing as much dryness. Do I like it as much as I like the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Foundation? No, I don't think so. I do think the consistencies are similar and the finishes are similar, but I do think this one dries down a little bit faster and does look a little bit more dry. So I definitely am feeling more positively this time around. Who knows, maybe the Kula primer that I used broke the foundation up in a weird way. Maybe this moisturizer is more compatible than the Pure Lease one. Maybe since my skin is a little bit better prepped, it's just going on more nicely. So this is why, you know, first impression you got to take with a grain of salt. You really need to test things more than once to know how you feel about them. It's why I always like to update you guys in my beauty report because, yeah, the first go around may not necessarily be the, the best or most accurate depiction of how something performs. I am going to, again, conceal under my under eyes, use shape tape again. The only thing I'm going to do different than yesterday is I'm going to test out this Fenty setting powder on one half of my face and the cover effects I used yesterday on the other half of my face. I'm curious to see if the shine control factor is any different because this is not as mattifying as the Fenty one is. So we'll see, we'll see if that makes any difference with how this wears. All right, so I'm going to put on the rest of my face and then I'll meet you guys right back here in a little bit. All right, rest of my makeup is on. I'm ready to move it along with this wear test. Let me, let me give you a few little updates, some thoughts. So right now I feel like things are looking pretty good. I feel like the rest of my face makeup went on perfectly fine. I didn't really have issues with it patching or doing anything weird yesterday either, so that doesn't surprise me. Also, I am wearing Fenty's uh, powder on this half of my face, my left half, and then uh, cover effects on the right half of my face. And at this very particular moment, I can't really tell a difference. They both look pretty much the same. So. We'll see a few hours from now whether or not one side is shiny and the other one is not, or if it really makes no difference one way or the other. But overall, I feel like my skin looks even, my makeup looks good. I mean, it looks like I'm wearing makeup, but it doesn't look heavy or cakey. It doesn't look like it's accentuating dryness the way that it did before. So, so far, much better than yesterday. We'll see how the rest of the day goes. On that note, it is 11.57 a.m. I am about to go to my parents' house to go file my taxes because they have the tax software on my dad's computer and I can e-file over there without having to buy it again myself. So, gonna go take care of that super fun business, but I'll check in with you guys later. Hello there. So, it is uh, 7.06 at night and I'm here to do a final check-in, share some, share, 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 blah, blah, blah. apparently I cannot talk this evening. Hmm. Share some final thoughts with you guys on this foundation. So considering this makeup has only been on for seven hours, I feel like it's looking pretty worse for the wear. It is rubbed off a lot around my nose, on my chin. It's uh, kind of disappearing at this point. I feel like my blush bronzer and highlight also has faded pretty significantly. The only thing that's remotely held up is my eye makeup, so kudos to you, Pixie, for that. Well, I guess Pixie and Milani. Anyway, so here is the thing with this foundation. I am glad that I just got a sample of it. I'm glad that I didn't go out and purchase it because I do not think 
I would run out and spend 50 something dollars on this product. I think that the texture and the finish is somewhat similar to the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Foundation, but I like the Laura Mercier one better. I feel like the coverage is better, it lasts longer on me, and it stays less shiny. Right now, I am looking a little, a little greasy, a little shiny right now, and I do not feel that there is a significant difference between the Fenty side and the cover effect side. I feel like I'm just a little shiny all over the place. As far as longevity goes and oil control goes, like this is supposed to be transfer proof and sweat proof, like nah, nah man, I don't think that is the case at all. This is obviously transferred off very easily around my nose and I feel like my makeup is just faded, so I'm really not super impressed with this, especially for the price. If I'm gonna pay almost $60 for a foundation, it better work miracles in my book. But this just for me, it's a no-go. I just don't feel like it finishes quite as well as I would like. I don't like the fact that it didn't work well with a primer. I like to wear sunscreen and primers underneath my makeup usually, so the fact that it seemed like today without wearing a primer or SPF, it went on better. Plus not to mention the fact that you don't even get a full ounce of product for the amount of money that you're spending. Like I know you don't need to use a lot to get decent coverage, but it still feels like a lot of money for not a lot of foundation. Anyway, I think that's probably all I need to say on this topic for now. Obviously, I still have the rest of the product left in my little sample jar. I'll probably try this out again another couple of times just to make sure my thoughts don't change, and then I'll keep you guys updated in my monthly beauty report. I usually post those videos at the end of the month, so make sure you're subscribed and come back for that if you'd like to hear my final, final thoughts on this product and see if some kind of miracle happens and I change my mind. But in the meantime, I hope it was helpful for you guys to see this product in action, to hear my thoughts, to see how it performed on someone with crazy oily skin. If you guys have picked this up, if you've tried it, if you've gotten a sample, definitely let me know what your experience has been in the comments. I'd be curious to hear if you guys love it, if you didn't like it, and if you are a fan of the Vanish Stick Foundation, do you like the liquid better or are you more of a fan of the stick? Let me know if you've tried them both because I'd be really curious to hear your guys' feedback. And of course, if you guys like these wear test review type videos, give this one a thumbs up. I always really appreciate your feedback. And on that note, I am going to go put on my pajamas. Like, I don't even care that it's not even 8 o'clock at night right now. I am ready to take off my makeup and get snuggly. It is one of those kind of days. <laughs> so I hope you guys have a good one, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.